all of us would love to play at a challenger level in the top lane and the truth whether you believe it or not is that there are only a few key techniques anyone can easily apply to actually stomp top what's up game worker i'm the jizz and in today's upload i am excited to show you gameplay from a thousand lp grand challenger riven main who crushes a warwick which will be our melee matchup and then a quinn which will be our range matchup now this dude's mechanics are some of the best i've ever seen and even inspiring to be honest so let's get into it to see exactly what he does so the first game we're going to be watching is the quinn matchup now at level one whenever you're into a ranged champion as a melee champion letting the wave come into you is super important so as you can see this riven is only going to last at the minions with his q or auto attacks when he can and his other priority is to stay as healthy as possible this is really important because when you actually do hit your power spikes at level three and potentially level six you're going to be as healthy as possible so you can actually do something at those power spikes now as you can see riven will sometimes move towards this north wall to try and stay in xp range of the minions that are dying and she'll also q fours towards quinn to stay in xp range as well this is still really important because you don't want to fall behind in terms of levels to your opponent now as this wave pushes into riven she also wants to make sure this wave isn't too big when it crashes under her tower so if you can thin the wave by auto attacking it and queuing it or using your abilities on it whatever champion you're on this is really good because it will just make it easier to control and actually manage and see us under your tower now when quinn leaves the lane here lots of people lots of top laners are just going to hard shot this lane for no real reason what you want to do in these situations if you do not want to recall is just a slow push and stack a wave now riven auto attack this a couple of times as the wave reset this is just to secure the push once this has been secured your goal is just to last hit these minions now of course at the end here riven uses her q a little bit but the main point of this is that the next wave when it collides you can see this isn't colliding under quinn's tower that's what's going to happen if you push too hard so just by last hitting this means that the next wave is going to collide in a position where you can actually shove the next one because it's not under the enemy's tower and as you can see ribbon shoves this and then gets a nice easy recall off now we also have to remember that in this lane guys quinn has ignite riven has teleport so remember in terms of cooldowns for a 1v1 quinn does have an extra spell in there now as you can see when riven returns to lane this lane is pushing back into her which is a good thing right because we're against a ranged champion this is what we want not only does it mean we can farm near our tower in the near future but this also opens up quinn to ganks now you can see riven is farming with her q when she can try not to take that much harass and all of a sudden when a Mumu comes into gank this is when riven turns around and runs into quinn now gragas is also ganking this lane you might be like oh it's team diff at this point but really it isn't the reason this is possible is because of riven's wave management and she is letting the range champion hang herself now when this play dissipates we still have to control the wave because we don't want to recall because we just recalled and bought our items so we want to stay on the map for a little bit longer here so managing this wave just by last hitting is super important because it's going to keep this wave in this position for a period of time now we can see here the riven is tp and there are two reasons why this is great not only are the enemy champions cassiopeia and leona push so far forward that it makes it a very high percentage play you know something successful is going to happen but also riven's wave is in a good position where she's probably not going to miss that much and as a result of this she picks up an assist on cassiopeia and a kill on leona then she recalls immediately because she wants to get to top as soon as she can not to give quinn as much breathing room as possible and when she does return to top lane you can see that after clearing this wave the wave is actually going to reset now she tries to stop quinn's recall which is actually a smart tactic but makes an actual mistake here you can see this minion wave when you don't commit to hard shoving it as soon as possible what this is going to do to the lane and you'll see it here the next minion wave the collision point is going to be too close to the enemy tower that it puts you in a riskier position to actually farm it so it might be a little awkward just because you might take a tower hit or two and it also opens yourself up to the enemy jungler for about 10 to 20 seconds so what riven should have done was just last hit that wave so just stack a wave like she did before and then when the next wave collides that's when you go crazy and shove now one tactic you can also do into range matchups if you're a melee champion is you let the wave come into you by faking to recall and you simply do this by staying in fog so as you can see riven is standing in this lane brush and quinn because she doesn't have it warded probably thinks that after shoving that wave riven recalled but she obviously didn't and this allows riven to get this golden experience for free without taking any harass for it which is probably what's going to happen if quinn knows riven is staying now she does exactly the same for the next wave she runs out of the lane to bait quinn into hard shoving which is what she does and again she collects this wave without taking any damage so remember in these matchups guys especially riven against quinn it's a very hard matchup for riven to play so really what you're about is making the lane as easy as possible for you to actually deal with but you're also about making plays for your teammates with that teleport advantage now in this next cannon wave that comes to lane riven thinks that quinn has recalled so she hive shoved this lane which is correct and then she recalls pretty standard stuff here because she wants to buy some items now when she returns to lane you can see the riven can actually freeze this wave off these minions here but she decides not to which is fine and then goes to ward the rift herald now this ward isn't really the best time to ward because really what you should do before 
beforehand is actually sort your wave out. So Riven, as you can see, when she returns to lane, she actually hard shoves this wave. She should hard shove before going to ward. This means that Quinn is going to miss more minions because the quicker you're getting your minions under the enemy tower and the quicker they're going to die. And you can always place that ward 10 seconds later. Now Riven again returns to lane with the wave in a really good position, but because she doesn't have teleport and Quinn might get back to lane very soon because of her ultimate. So what she wants to do with this next wave as it comes to lane is just hard shove it. This means that if Quinn does go to roam elsewhere on the map, maybe in the bot lane or in the mid lane, she is going to miss more for it. And after shoving this, Riven obviously recalls and buys. Now in the next sequence, guys, this is where the game is really won. So as you can see, Riven returns to lane and again picks up some minions that Quinn has shoved in. After this, she decides to roam down to this mid fight. Now the reason for this is simply because Quinn is also there as well. And your game plan into range champions is all about the team fighting because as melee champions, that's what you bring. But the reason this is risky and sometimes won't work is simply because when you get to that lane, which is 15 seconds away, the fight has already ended or the enemy champions are already dead and the play becomes very risky. But Riven plays this beautifully, blocks the Lee Sin Q of her E and also kills Lee Sin by flashing onto him using her wind slash. And as soon as she knows she can't kill the Quinn, she just backs off because she knows that it's just a waste of time trying to kill her. So she gets Scuttle Crab, goes back to the top lane, shoves this out and then recalls and bites again. And at this point, she is three and zero, even though Quinn is still having a nice game. Riven has put not just herself, but also her teammates in a position to actually do really well. Now she gets back to lane and picks up the wave that Quinn shoved and all of a sudden the enemy jungler runs it down and this is going to happen sometimes. You're going to get free kills as a top laner and after getting this free kill, Riven decides to chase down the Leona because Leona doesn't have flash from a previous fight and she also picks up this kill as well. At this point in the game, Riven is 5-0 and zero, and her team is doing so well because of her TP plays that they end up winning the game in the next couple of minutes and this is one example how you can play against the ranged champion in the top lane but still hard carry a game. Now let's get into the next game and this is against the Warwick one trick in Korean Challenger and this dude is running Barrier and Teleport. And just look in the bottom left for me. Riven is running Ignite this game, not Teleport. So in terms of the 1v1 potential here, Riven does have an extra spell for the 1v1. So we have to take that into consideration. Now because Warwick at level 1 is a lot scarier than a Riven is, Riven again, because the enemy champion is stronger, wants the wave to push into her. So the only time she touches the first melee minions is when she needs to last hit them and she does this by queuing. As soon as she finishes this mini trade with Warwick, she runs away, waiting for her queue to reset. Lanes like these, especially against melee champions, are all all about your cooldowns and how you manage them and the minion wave. So again, in this game, because the wave is pushing into Riven, whenever she gets the chance to thin the wave out to make it easier for her to last hit, she's going to do that. Now Warwick, as you can see, does a great job of actually contesting this wave, but all of a sudden Riven randomly hits level two, which is a kill opportunity for Riven. But just because Warwick has barrier and he also hits level two with his E up, it's very hard to continue this trade. But R so Riven backs off, but when she goes back in, she can because Warwick no longer has his E and that extra resistance, but unfortunately misses her stun at the end of this and the play ends, but it's still a decent trade for Riven. Now again, because Warwick is the stronger champion, we just want this wave to push into us. So again, if we can actually last hit or thin a minion wave out for free without taking any damage, then we look to do so. As you can see, Riven queuing in here for this melee minion. And when Warwick does actually hit level three, all we want to do is just stay healthy. We do not want to cuck ourselves in the near future by being too greedy in the present. So when this wave pushes in, Riven is just going to last hit it under her tower. And she doesn't lose anything like a lot of other top laners would by just being way too greedy. Now when level four does come around, Riven can actually start to trade and this is why it's so important to understand how your trade combos and actual trading patterns work on your specific champion. So Riven here knows that Warwick wants this minion so she doesn't want to give it up for free. So she EQWs in and auto attacks Warwick at the end and knowing that she's going to draw a little bit of creep aggro, Q's away. And just like the Quinn game, just because you've let the enemy champion push themselves into you, this opens that enemy champion up to ganks and as you can see, the friendly Diana is ganking for the Riven here and Riven is going to pick up the first kill in this lane which actually snowballs the lane like crazy. Now what she does after this is very important because as you can see Riven is going to push this minion wave and the next into the enemy tower and this is all because, look in the bottom left for me, Riven does not have teleport, Warwick does. So knowing that Warwick will TP back to this wave because obviously he doesn't want to miss all of these blue minions, Riven needs Diana's help though to actually shove this wave in. It's way too risky to do it on our own because Warwick, even though he is 0-1, has had a chance to buy items. But all of a sudden the friendly Aurelia pops up and it's a 3v1 and Riven picks up another kill. And remember this isn't team diff. This is just Riven knowing the matchup, knowing how to manage minion waves. And even if she didn't get these kills, she was still doing well in this lane. So after recalling and buying and again running back to lane, we always have to consider guys our cooldowns. So look in the bottom left for me. But she does have Ignite. So if she does go for an all in with Warwick, she's probably going to win just because she has that Ignite. So after going for this trade, you can see how hard Riven wins it with that item advantage. But when she's on cooldown, look in the bottom left for me, Q, W and E, they've all got timers on, she backs off. But when they're about to come off cooldown, look at her position and how it changes. She's no longer scared of Warwick and even
even initiates another trade, and when she hits level 6, she ignites, wind slashes, and ends up turret diving and picking up another kill. Now, of course, when we kill the enemy top laner, what do we want to do with the wave? We want to shove. So Riven will kill these minions, but then decides to recall instead of getting this tower plate, because this tower plate is free. But this is what we call matching in high reloads. You never want, if you do have a lead on your opponent, for them to just have free time in the lane when you're not actually there. So by overstaying that time you're using to actually auto attack the tower, you can use that time to run back to lane and just dumps your opponent again. So unless you need that 160 gold for a significant item, do not get tempted by it. Recall just like this Riven and bang, she's back in the lane, ready to contest the Warwick again. But we have to consider a couple of things again. Look in the bottom left for me. Riven used her ultimate. Warwick is level 6 now. So Warwick in a 1v1 would actually win just because he has that ultimate cooldown. And one other important thing, Riven can still trade in this lane, but notice how she saves one of her spells. This is her E because this is a dash and a shield more importantly. If she uses this and Warwick dies onto her, Warwick can definitely kill her. Now the lane again is pushing into Riven, so she'll be last hitting with her Qs, making sure to save her E in case Warwick gets too aggressive. And this continues for a little while, but all of a sudden when Riven's ultimate comes back off cooldown, you can see how much more aggressive she is. Now thankfully she times her E perfectly for the actual Warwick ultimate, so she negates a lot of that damage and ends up killing the Warwick for the third time in this lane. So this little sequence here goes to show you how important counting your cooldowns are and also the enemy cooldowns, especially in this melee matchup. Now after shoving this wave and getting a tower plate and trying to shove the next one, all of a sudden the enemy jungler shows. And the reason Riven actually stays in this lane instead of recalling here is simply because she needs gold for a certain item. So this is absolutely fine staying in lane. That's also kind of good because you're saying to your bot lane, well, the enemy jungler's top, you're still 2v2, you're saying to your mid laner, there's no threat of you getting ganked because the enemy jungler is near me. And all of a sudden when Riven actually does decide to recall after killing these minions and having the gold for her item, Nunu tries to stop her recall and because she has a Shen support, she actually baits the Nunu into jumping on her and Warwick at this point has had enough of the lane and decides to run it down himself. And already guys, at this stage of the game, Riven has such a sizable lead that they end up winning in the next 5 or so minutes and this lane is completely GG'd at this point. And hopefully this guide gave you an insight on how to beat melee champions, how to beat ranged champions and if it did help you out and if you did enjoy it, please let us know by leaving a like down below. Remember as well to hit that subscribe button and to check out the Game Week website on your way out, linked in the description and comment section for all your challenger exclusive content. We're talking champion guys, champion courses, we're talking role guides, high elo von analyses, everything. You name it, we have it on the website, so sign up. And until tomorrow's daily upload, this has been the Jizz. Boom.